Hi there, gang, and welcome to another episode of the SDR Disc Couple Podcast. I'm your host, Neil, and today we're joined by a Belgian SDR who I met through LinkedIn a couple of months back. We have Sam Bertrand. How are you doing today, Sam? I'm fine. Thank you, Neil. Thank you so much for joining the show. So, Sam, for the listeners and watchers out there, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, who are you? Where are you based in the world? Where do you work and what do you do, sir? Yes. Uh, I'm Sam. I'm 27 years old. Uh, I live in Ghent in Belgium at the moment. And I work for an HR tech company called Tracy. Perfect. And just for the listeners out there, could you tell us a little bit about Tracy? Like, what do you do and who are the type of personas that you normally speak with, Sam? Um, Tracy uh, is a uh, recruiting software that can be used in the pre-screening phase of a recruitment process. And the technology can um, extract uh, the work style attitude of people out of uh, how they write. So no, not what they write, but how they write it. Uh, and it's very interesting. So, yeah. Definitely. And uh, just for the listeners out there, so true story, um, I was looking at Tracy's technology uh, and Sam and team were asking me, well, Neil, send me your CV and we'll show you what we can do. And it literally provided me a PDF and it helped build out my character, my likes, my dislikes, what type of leader I am. And it was so eerily accurate. The AI on it is pretty amazing. So shouts out to Trace and you guys and the team. Uh, definitely uh, encourage people to have a check out, especially for any managers that are watching. And I think it's a super cool tool and also for recruiters. Um, but obviously, like being a pre-screen recruitment solution, what are the type of uh, people or prospects? What are the titles? Who, who do you normally reach out to, Sam? Uh... Now, um, yeah, more bigger companies. Huh? Um, so if you look just at the accounts, the bigger companies with a, uh, a lot of uh, vacancies, uh, a lot of influx of candidates. Um, and the personas, it's a bit like, yeah, from everywhere. We started to try first recruiters and HR mm -hmm. managers, HR directors. And after some months, we, we got the feedback like, why don't try the CIO? Why don't try mm. a bit more C level? Because they yeah. are the decision makers. Why? So I think with what we have now, we just can't uh, uh, come up to one person or one persona mm -hmm. in this company. You need to make all these leads a bit warm from everywhere, you know? And then it's, yeah. it's, yeah. Uh, it's nice if you feel that it all comes together and then it works. So, yeah. Definitely. So basically, in, in essence, like anybody that would be, like you say, involved in like a hiring process from recruitment to management, but also, as you mentioned, like going up to the C-level, because you're right, these people are going to be the ones that will sign off or choose to move with the solution. Um, and obviously, with Tracy, you guys are growing, expanding, you're testing out different stuff. And you're one of the, the main testers out there to check out the market there as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And... Um, and the other thing is, like, uh, so we've had some guests uh, who are from Belgium and from Kent as well. And there is quite a, a close-knit SDR community out in Belgium. Is that right? That's right, yeah. It, it really comes up. Uh, I think a lot of, or I mean, the term SDR came up these last years. And, I mean, if we look now, like, uh, the UK or other companies and how they are doing it, we, we have an, a very, these last years, a uh, big tech scene that has been created here out of yeah, city uh, who's promoting this and mm -hmm. together with this of course a lot of sdrs and bdrs um yeah are starting uh, their sales career here so it's fun Definitely. it's really a proud job and you can feel it some of my friends are sdr too and and it's, it's just so much fun to learn from each other and yeah this makes a, a real community over here uh, 100% agree. So like I would say, hand on heart, Belgium is one of my favorite cities to go to, yeah. to work with clients out there. I've seen quite a cool bunch of startups like Showpad, Secure Code Warrior, Integrity. And I think we also have a, a mutual collection uh, with somebody that was once a guest on it. You're familiar with Yolien Klawitz? Yes, I know her. Yeah. 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 <laughs> She's one of your friends, right? Um, well, yeah, I know her. We, we, uh, I, I reached out to some SDRs here from Ghent and I texted her, oh, can we maybe have a chat or, or start a WhatsApp group to, to learn from each other? She was like, yeah, huh. let's do this. And that's the first time I, I've heard from you. 
to be honest. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you see, it's it's a it's a community. It's a small community. It <laughs> is. It is. And that, that's kind of like one of the questions, that, um, like as an inbound SDR or an SDR that's on a call, one of the great questions that you can ask is like, how did you hear about our service? Mm -hmm. How did you hear about our company? And yeah, it was through one of my former students, mm -hmm. one of the guests on this show that you heard about this podcast. And I remember when speaking to Yoli and he said, hey, I'm speaking to Sam. And she said, yeah, yeah, I know, I'm a cool guy, cool guy. <laughs> Uh, and as you mentioned, like you've created like a WhatsApp community and definitely if that's something we can share later down the line, because I know that you've got some other aspirations of what you'd like to do yeah. with the SDR community in uh, in Belgium. We'll, we'll come on to that a little later on. But obviously, um, in terms of the, our podcast, what we're always interested to know is like, how do people such as yourself get into this life of, you know, sales development and kind of what is your journey into this business been like? So looking at your LinkedIn profile, uh, if we go back, uh, you were studying international business management. Uh, you went on to quite a few internships, uh, working within the retail sector, also working at Vandenborg, uh, and then obviously being a country manager at Scan Movers. And then you got to uh, Tracy uh, as an SDR. And I also have to say congratulations, Sam, because before we jumped onto this call, you advised that uh, Tracy has renewed your contract further. So you've made the cut, dude. So congratulations. But really interested to know, like coming from studying international business management and going through all these startups, what was that journey like from you? What did you learn in these different roles? And how did you make the decision to join Tracy? Um, well, to complete my studies, um, I had to do an internship abroad. And I knew... I wanted to do something in sales and that was a period that I, yeah, like most people, I was searching for an internship on through LinkedIn. I was like, okay, this term SDR, PDR, what does this mean? And, and I was mm -hmm. Googling it like, okay, what is this? And so on. So I was like, okay, I found a startup in Amsterdam where I can fulfill the role of an SDR. Let's try it. And I was working there for four months and mm -hmm. afterwards I was like, Yes, really, I want to do this. I want to come back to Ghent. Uh, I want to find a tech company in the startup environment and just let's do it. And then also through LinkedIn, I, I came up on uh, or to Tracy and I was like, okay, let's give it a try. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's why I, where I'm at, where I'm still am today. So love it. And obviously, like as as an intern, you're you're working in different businesses, and you must be learning like certain skills that you can use in your current role. So, like for some people, it could be like you said, cold calling, mm. or it could be like admin, or you know, following up and writing out emails, contacting mm. businesses, or you know, doing general day to day responsibilities within an office. What sort of skills did you learn in those internships? that you can still use today as an SDR? Um, well, like you, like you just mentioned, like the cold calling, because uh, it's really something you have to see from others too. Like uh, I need to be sure if I'm doing great or good or what I'm doing, is it good? I want to check with somebody who already have experience with this. So definitely that's something that I've learned. Uh, also how to manage a calendar. Uh, I didn't mm -hmm. had this before. It's so important. It's, it's, not only changed my life in, uh, in my professional role, but also just my whole life. I finally have a planner, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. It. Uh, but yeah. these little things can do so much. I mean, and, and so much skills that, that help me in this sales path, but that I can use in, in my daily life too. So yeah. Um, and then to be honest, if I look to the future, uh, I think I can say that I want to, um, yeah, grow in the sales path. I have a bit this ambition to grow, but nobody starts mm. ever like a sales director. And I think if you want to be become there or become a sales director or something like this role, then you should mm -hmm. start from the beginning, I think, in sales. That's a bit my opinion. Because it's a fun job, of course, but some tasks aren't always as fun. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes the cold yeah. calling can feel a bit like, ah, I don't know. But it's a time that you have to do, I think, before you get mm. further. And yeah, I'm learning every day. It's, it's fantastic. I love it. 
So like you said, like within the internship, you're, you're learning skills like cold calling, but you've also had the opportunity to like speak with other colleagues to figure out, okay, am I doing this? Okay. Is there another better way to do it? Um, and obviously like with the coaching piece, like I always think it's a good idea to have your calls listened into yeah. and given feedback, because that's like you say, that's how you're going to grow. That's how you're going to evolve, um, as well. And then obviously like time management time management with your calendar is something I always advise to SDRs yeah. and yeah before I started on my life in sales I didn't really have a calendar I just did what I wanted to do you know but it helps bring structure to your day it helps you focus on things you know which are priority and then help let go of things and try not to get too stressed about it as well um and obviously like you're you're doing this role within an SDR and it is a like you say it's, it can be a tough job it asks a lot of, of you, but there are so many different things that you can learn. Um, and another piece, because we may be having people that are perhaps on that internship path and like yourself, they want to go work for a tech startup. They may be looking on LinkedIn. Would you have any advice for people that are maybe an intern and thinking about going into an SDR position? Um, well, yeah, you have to define if you want to work for startup environment i think or for a big company i think that's a bit the first thing. Mm. also of course where you want to work but then you also can choose which kind of service or which kind of product which kind of industry all these things are uh things you keep you have to keep in mind before you make a decision and if mm. you have the finest for yourself then you can go target these companies who have vacancies and you will will find one definitely. Um, Perfect, thank you. And like, um, so obviously going from internship and then coming on to being an SDR for Trace. I remember you said like a year and a half ago you'd only just discovered mm. the title sales development rep, and it was new. And you, like you said, you've got friends that are doing it. What was it like for your first couple of months at Tracy? Like, what were you learning? What uh, were you understanding about your industry and like what sort of training were you given to help you in your role? Um, well, I was lucky because, um, well, our CEO has not a company, a sales company. So, Ooh. yeah, he was learning us a lot. So, yeah, uh, that was for me really what convinced me to do this. But he was like, OK, now we, we need to check what are, are our ICPs. So we did so many brainstorming sessions, so many, uh, yeah, talks to each other, like, uh, who are the ICPs? What are our gains? What are the pains? Uh, and you get constantly, you get the feedback and with this feedback after some time, let's say two weeks, every two weeks on Friday or on Monday, you have to have another talk. And like, this is the feedback we got. Let's do something mm. with this and go on. And this is already for me now for seven, seven months. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think. The first month for me was really like hunting. Like we have a product, it's, it's market ready. Where are we going to try to sell this and to who? And it's like, okay, let's try the Netherlands. They also speak Dutch, let's do it. They are like mm. three years in front of Belgium. Let's go, just go there. They're very technology uh, advanced. So, okay. And then within which companies to who will we sell it? And if this is quite clear, then yeah, the rest follows, I think. Perfect. So if, if I get it right, like, um, like you said, your CEO, like had another sales company they're going for, and you were kind of figuring this out with them as well as to like, who is your ICP, like your ideal customer profile, um, thinking about, okay, you've got this product, which you want to take to market. You want to figure out, okay, what are the, the right regions you realize? Okay. If we go to, uh, to the Netherlands and if I heard it correctly, like they're kind of like three years ahead yeah. of where you guys in Belgium, that's something I never knew. Um, and like you're catching up with them like every Friday to give feedback, to say this is working, this is not working. And this is kind of what you've been doing for the last seven months. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Yeah. That must be a cool uh, journey to be on, like to be doing this alongside your CEO, right? Fantastic. Really fantastic. Yeah. To be part of the sales team since the beginning till now and work so close with the CEO and really like, if I'm not sure about the decision that I want to make, he will always be there like, okay, let's do it like this. You, you, you just do it. We'll see what, what happens. And yeah, it's fantastic. Definitely. 
And I think like thinking back to like an episode that we had with Yolene, where she had worked in like three different companies, one which was like a big company. Uh, and obviously you just, she felt like she was just another number in the company. She then went off to another startup where similar to yourself, there was having weekly meetings with the management, the CEO, like they were the first SDRs, they were testing so many things out. Uh, and then she went on to her, her most recent startup, which is Integrity, which is a little bit bigger, but they still have that time with the CEO. And Yolene always said like, in these early stage startups, it's important to be sitting down with the management to, to give feedback, but also to ask lots of questions because they're the people that have come up with this solution and they're the ones taking it to market. Yeah. So they're the experts, but they're also learning with you as well. So what I'd be really interested to know is like with Sam, like what is, like you said, you wanted this career in sales. Where do you want to get to? Like say in a year or two years time, where do you want to be in terms of a sales position? Oh, uh, that's a difficult one because uh, our, our, the management was in the beginning like, yeah, yeah. And then in, let's say 12 months, 18 months, eh? and Tracy is growing, then there are mm -hmm. probably two options or you become an AE or you become an SDR manager. And we were like, okay, together with another mm. colleague, you will become the AE. I'm the SDR manager. So <laughs> I hope really, because I'm, I'm so happy in this company. It's, it's, I, I really, I, it's, it's just so much fun working there and so interesting i really hope that i can stay um and that's yeah that we will grow um but for myself yeah i think i'm still learning a lot i think give me another six months and then i will check okay maybe a bit more uh in in the direction of an account executive i think yeah, yeah. okay I, I think that's a, a mature response in the sense of like, give yourself some time to, yeah. because you're still learning. Yeah, um, and I think I went through a similar thing. Like when I was working at Zora, uh, I came on as like the first SDR. Then we hired another SDR guy called Charlie. Um, and when he came through the door, I was like, right, I want to be the AE. That's all I want to be, Charlie. Right. And we were given a couple of options and they were saying, well, look, somebody might become the team lead. Somebody may become SDR manager. Uh, somebody might move on into the account executive role. And I was so like, yes, all right, Charlie, you take the SDR yeah. manager role and I'll take the AE role. Let, let's just get down with that. And he was totally on board with it. Yeah. However, uh, as a year passed on, the leadership reached out and they kind of came to us separately and said, Neil, we'd like you to be the SDR manager. And Charlie, we'd like you to continue doing the SDR role. Uh, and maybe go into a team lead role because we're going to hire another three SDRs. And that caused a little bit of indifference between us okay. because like we, we sat down because we was very open. We we're in a small room and we could always talk to each other. And I said, Hey, Charlie, I've just got off the call with the U S and they want me to be the SDR manager. And like they're talking about, and he said, yeah, they were telling me about a team lead role. And I said, but dude, I don't want to do the SDR manager position. And he was like, well, I know you don't, I know you want to be the AE, right? And I said, yeah, I know. I said, how the hell do we get out of this? Yeah. But cut a long story short, I, I had to take the SDR manager position and he took the team role. And it did kind of change our dynamic a little yeah. bit, in all honesty. And I wouldn't say there was any sort of resentment. It was just like, it wasn't what we wanted to do. In the long run, it did help us because it then helped me learn, that actually, I liked management. And Charlie realized he liked dealing with partnerships and he wanted to be like an yeah. alliance channel partner. Um, but yeah, like when you're working in a startup, sometimes we have these plans, but when we go through a bit more experience and we get to test stuff out, we may realize we like to, you know, do other stuff. And I think with a lot of SDRs that I've helped out, I said like the SDR role is like the first position you come in to a business. Uh, but you could go into so many different paths, Sam, like you could go into customer success. You can go into sales account management. You can go into product. You can go into engineering and being where you are today. I envy that because I love that feeling yeah. of being like one of the first people in <laughs> it is. Uh, and, and testing it yeah. out. And as you mentioned, like you've got a lot of friends that are doing the SDR role. Like, how do you guys catch up? Do you talk about like what you're doing in the other companies? Do you share best practices? Yeah. How does it work? Like when you're speaking to your friends that are doing the SDR job in different companies? Um, well, we have WhatsApp groups, of course. Um, I have one friend who is, uh, also in an HR tech company in Ghent. So that makes it a bit more difficult 
<laughs> because, <laughs> because you don't want him to be, yeah, uh, still your at least. But yeah. uh, no, we're you know we're cool to each other. I mean, yeah, you need to help each other. Stronger together is a bit um, my saying. But um, no, we were in WhatsApp groups. Um, I've heard today that this doesn't work anymore uh, the, in the algorithm. But on LinkedIn, if if you have if you do your social selling or you want to spread something, we have groups and we post the link in it. So other people can like it and follow it. So it has a bit more spread and uh, they follow up, they give advice. She's just little things, just a feeling that if you, if you don't know which decision you have to take, you can go to your friends and like, what did you do in this situation? Um, mm. I mean, if you feel a bit more, uh, a bit more down, you, you have some of these days that, that you're just tired and you don't know what to do then they are there to say exactly the same. Well, I have the same. And then you can share this with someone else. I mean, mm. yeah, that's a bit how we help each other. Um, yeah, just give advice to each I love other. It. Yeah. Definitely. So like you said, uh, creating that community like on LinkedIn. Yeah. And I think like when we connected a few months ago, you said kind of what motivated you to kind of do this concept of an SDR community in Belgium is by seeing stuff from like the SDRs of London yeah. and you've been like following their posts yeah. and I think you were saying to me back then like you'd love to create like the SDRs of Belgium yeah. or kind of a group like is that still on the cards and like do you still have those plans or um, what's changed? Well yeah but it, it became a bit busier uh, at Tracy to be honest so if I want to do this I want to do it good you know uh, hmm. it has to have an uh, it has to be a real plan like how will we do it not just Let's start this and, and start a WhatsApp group and whatever. It really has to, to mean something for others. It, it takes some time. And I don't feel that for this moment now, I can manage mm. this time because it's too busy at work. Um, yeah. And also, I think I need to get a bit more experience first to fulfill it. Because, yeah, I think that's a feeling. But it's still on, on the long run. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Definitely. Then, um, <clears throat> yeah. So for any listeners or watching this episode, if you think you're, if you're a Belgian SDR and you like this idea of like the SDRs of Belgium and maybe helping out Sam, <laughs> by all means get in touch with him because you're right, it's a community, it's a yeah. group effort, it's helping out. And yeah, I always say like work comes first. And then obviously when you're doing your community support, we do that after the same way with me. I do happy selling work, that's primary. And then I do this podcast as a secondary thing to help out other SDRs. But I can't do this on my own. I have to do this with other people and I'm, I'm still learning as we go along. Uh, but sometimes it's also the, the idea of just do right. Just go ahead and just see what happens. But you've taken that first step yeah. of that WhatsApp group. You're talking to people on LinkedIn. So maybe as an idea, posting the idea into those groups to say, Hey guys, got this idea. Would anybody be interested in, in kind of doing this as well? So, also, I'd like to know, like, doing Tracy, like, for the last seven months, have you had any cool stories of, like, funny times of, like, when you're trying to reach to your prospects during the current climate we're in, or any failures that you've kind of really learned a lesson from that you think would be quite interesting to share? Any insights into being an SDR at Tracy, Sam? Well, uh, yeah, sometimes it's a bit, it can be a bit awkward because um, I'm also giving demos, but it's about oh. people's soft skills. And what I've learned, um, I see it as a, as a triangle. People who are more uh, information-wise, eh, who think really like, okay, give me the details, and, and that's it. Then you have the relational people who really are like, mm. want to have the talk. Uh, and then you have the outgoing people who are really like, no, no, no. And, it's, and if I have to give a demo and show mm. the soft skills to that person, it can be so awkward. Because if mm. you have an outgoing person, it's like, no, 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 that's not me. You know, <laughs> they don't want, and then you're there and it's like, yeah, but our tool says it is. And you know, <laughs> I need to find you sometimes this, but uh, yeah, yeah this, this can be sometimes a bit, um, it, this can create an awkward situation, but, uh, hmm. or it was in the beginning, let's say. Like, but, yeah. Uh, I, t I totally get it. Like within sales, you have different buyer personas. That's exactly You'll right. have people like, you know, like the coach, they're fully on board. They love the solution. You've got the skeptic who's just like, mm, mm. I don't really believe this. And then you have kind of like the guides, the people that love to talk, yeah. share insights about the business. They might not be a decision maker, but 
they'll give you all the information that you exactly. need. And it's like you said, adapting your conversation based on the different yeah. persona. But I think if I ever face somebody quite difficult where I think, okay, they could be skeptical. What I love to do is tell a story of somebody that looks like them yeah. and kind of how they've used a solution. And then I tell the story about that person, not so much about our product. Mm -hmm. And then I ask the skeptic at the end, Sam, how would you use this information or how you, how yeah. would you, how would you find this useful? How would you do it? And what happens psychologically is they've seen somebody else that looks like them talk about it and hear their story. Then they start creating a story in their own head. And when you ask them, in your opinion, how would you use this information? They then pitch back to you yeah. your story, but you can also hear things that they may yeah. or may not understand. Yeah. And, you know, that's how I used to, I used to love skeptics. They were my favorite salespeople. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I remember like when we were selling Showpad, we had to sell to VPs of sales and account executives. And these people are hard to convince, yeah. you know, they're salespeople. And every time I used to go into a room or like a, a demo, you'd always see them with their arms crossed yeah. like this. Right. And I'm like, okay, we've got another group. Let's go. <laughs> and I'd use these sort of techniques and ask the account executives, so how would you use Showpad and how could you see it? And they said, Oh, I could do it for proposals. I could do this. I can find out which page they're looking at, et cetera, et cetera. And by the end of the session, they were like moving forward saying, Neil, thank you so much. And we kind of like became friends. So yeah, yeah I think, I love it when, when you have difficult people, that's yeah, yeah. the fun yeah. bit, you know, <laughs> that's maybe the most fun part of it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of like, um, you're challenging somebody's mindset with an idea and a concept. You're then providing some sort of insight and education, and then in essence, kind of persuading to your way of thinking. But if you can make them believe that it, they've come to that conclusion, yeah. even though it's psychology, yeah. then it's that's fun to watch. Important. You know, that's what you need to create. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. All right. Um, so, like, if uh, so, like, it's been really great to have you on the show, and we've learned some great insights from you as well. Um, if you were to give like three tips to a younger Sam who's just about to start this journey as an SDR, mm -hmm. what three bits of advice would you give them, Sam? Um, well, there was already one that I gave a bit before. It's the calendar, really. Uh, yeah. schedule things out. For me, it really helped. Just use it. Uh, so important. So that was a very important one for me. Um, also, I think about cold calling. Um, I think if you feel like, ah, this is not going to go, search something about your leads. Uh, maybe an article. Create an aura that makes it more like, okay, I call for something. I mean, also, you, you have the business acumen. Before you call, you know everything about your tool. They try to think that they want to learn something from you. So that's what I mm. say always to myself. Um, and also, yeah, the, the, the mental health, I think, is so important. Um, I can feel, if I say to myself, I feel a bit tired, I go out running or I do something from sport, I come back full of energy. On Sundays, that's also one for me. I want to start mm. the week just not tired. I did before a lot. I was tired of my weekend going out with friends and so on. But for now, the Sunday is for me real like, yeah, it's, it's a holy day <laughs> just to recover from, <laughs> from Friday night. No, and then <laughs> you can start just, yeah, your week again. And yeah, so. I love that. I love that. So like you're saying, like your points are obviously like time management, get comfortable yeah. with that calendar. When you come to cold calling, like if you go into the mindset, of, okay, this is going to be difficult, they may reject me, then you're already setting yourself up for failure. But with the idea of on the other side, they want to learn something about this because you do have this knowledge, you have something valuable, and you want to impart that knowledge onto them. Uh, and yeah, mental health, taking the Sundays, I, I can relate <laughs> to that many years ago of like you get to Sunday evening, you're like, oh my God, I'm so tired, I've got work tomorrow, yeah. etc. But taking that time for yourself to recover, yeah. to recharge and get ready for a new week. I think, I think those are some solid bits of advice there, Sam. And are there any shout outs or kudos that you'd like to give on the show today, Sam? Uh, well, definitely to, uh, to our CEO, Jochen, Jochen Roof. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, he's always, he's such an open mind. He, he has such a busy weeks always, but, uh, yeah, for him, his, his employees are so important. Um, but everybody gets along, he takes his time to, to, um, to, to learn us something. And 
I, I'm sure if I say now, like tomorrow I want to go because I have new parts, he say, okay, you're ready for it. So hmm. yeah, shout out to him. Perfect. Jürgen, if you're listening in and hopefully <laughs> you are, like shout out to you, salute. I absolutely love that. And Sam, so obviously with this SDR community, if there's anybody that would like to reach out to you from Belgium or outside of Belgium, what's the best way to get in contact with you? Some people are like, find me on LinkedIn, yeah. find me on Instagram and Twitter. What's the best way to connect with you? I'm every day on LinkedIn, a lot. So um, yeah, just uh, send me a message. I'm uh, always in uh, for a conversation, really. Yeah. Love it. And that, that kind of makes me think, like, with your tool at Tracy HR, if somebody connects with you on LinkedIn, do you ever, like, check out their LinkedIn and, like, see their soft skills and maybe take their profile and put it into the platform? Do you ever do that? Yeah, yeah, I do. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, keeping it real. I absolutely love it. All right. Well, Sam, look, hopefully um, all goes well over the next couple of months uh, at Tracy. Um, we'll put your links into the show notes so people can get, reach out to you and get checked out by you as well. <laughs> But absolute pleasure to have you on the show, Sam. So most importantly, good luck for the rest of the week and happy selling, Sam. Thank you, Neil. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.